Hey guys, it's Hexical here, and today we're going to be talking about and building in the KVD67 Lite. This is KVD Fan's 67% keyboard, so let's go ahead and unbox it and go through the overview of what features it has. When you first unbox it, you're going to notice that it comes in a really nice carrying case wrapped in plastic. And while we're on, subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave a like on this video. It really helped me out and I appreciate it a lot. One of the things I really like about this keyboard is the carrying case it comes with. It feels really nice and sturdy, and on top of that, it just really presents itself nicely. When you first open it, the first thing you're going to notice is this really ugly cable. I'm not sure why they include it, and honestly, I think it just looked better without it because you can tell this is a really cheap cable. It also comes with their own stabilizer foam, which apparently helps with the sound, but I've never tried those out, and it also comes with some tools to take apart the case and everything else that you need. And the final thing are these two cards, which includes a build video and just some basic instructions, which I really like and is a nice touch. And underneath all that, you have the KVD67 Lite itself, and let me just say, it feels really quality, especially for the price point at $129, so let's go ahead and talk about some of the features. The case of the KVD67 is made out of ABS plastic, and the plate that you see here is polycarbonate. Included in that is also a silicon dampener between the plate and the PCB, and then below the PCB is also some foam. The PCB itself is 5-pin hot swap, so it can fit 3-pin and 5-pin switches in it. The PCB does also feature per-key RGB if you're into that, and along with that it supports QMK and VIA. The stabilizers included are pre-lubed and made out of polycarbonate also, and here's a quick sound test of those. Now that the overview and unboxing are all done, let's talk about the build and what I'm going to be using in it. The first thing that we're going to be talking about are the switches. The switches I'm going to be using today are Duroc Linears. As you can tell, these are a linear switch, and these have a bottom housing made out of nylon, a top housing made out of polycarbonate, and the stem is made out of palm. And this version has a 62 gram gold plated spring. They come in at 55 cents per switch, and they're one of my favorite linear switches I've tried out so far, especially after you've lubed and filmed them. And as you can see here, here's me lubing the switches and filming them up. I would highly recommend you do this if you get these switches because they are a little scratchy and they're a little wobbly without the film. The stabilizers do need a little bit work, but they're definitely not as bad as say like the RK61 I built a little while ago, which you can find a video about in the top right. To start with modding these, we just had to screw them out since they're screw-in stabilizers. And we're just going to be lubing these today since they are already pre-clipped for us. I'm not going to do a full lubing tutorial for the stabilizers in this video because I'm sure a lot of people would get bored, but if you are interested or need one, you can check out the videos in the top right. I have an RK61 modding tutorial and that works perfectly fine for almost any stabilizer. These ones did come pre-lubed, but it was very light and it definitely just wasn't consistent enough for me. Now that we have all the switches and stabilizers lubed, it's time to put the switches into the board itself. Of course, I did some editing to make it a little bit less boring, but it is really simple to put the switches into the keyboard, especially since it's a hotspot board. I did notice while trying to put some switches in that it felt a little crunchy or that it was a little hard to put the pins into the PCB, yet the pins were still straight on the switch itself. That might just be because this was a brand new board, I don't know what was going on there. Otherwise, the process, like I said, was really simple and really easy going. After getting all these in, I just can't help but love how these switches look too. I love the cyan look color to them. It really matches my setup and it just looks nice against this white board. On top of that, the smoky housings just look really nice against this frosted white plate. The keycaps we're going to be using today are the purple blue on white katakana from Novel Keys. It's a cherry profile die sub keycap set and it sells for $75. At its price point, it's a really nice quality keycap set. It's got katakana sub legends and it's in a white, purple, and blue colorway. I did notice some chips on the bottom of the keycaps, but it'd be nothing visible on the keyboard itself, so it's not a huge deal. They're pretty thick and they feel quality, so I have no complaints with this keycap set. Now that we have an overview of the keycaps, let's use some video magic and get these keycaps on the keyboard. And then let's take a look at some beauty shots and talk about my building experience. Building in the KBD67 Lite was a really, really nice experience overall. For $129, I think this is a really great entry-level keyboard, especially for somebody who is really breaking into the mechanical keyboard market. 
You could even get away without even touching or lubing the stabilizers. This was just a personal preference of mine and that's why I did it to mine. With the silicone dampener between the plate and the PCB and then the foam between the PCB and the case, it's a really nice stocky keyboard and that's something a lot of people are after right now. Like I did mention earlier, I did have some problems with some of the switches not going into the PCB correctly even though the pins were completely straight on the switches but I think that might have just been a new PCB problem or I might have just been doing something wrong because I am kind of new to this still. Another thing to mention about this keyboard is just how beautiful it looks. I like the really sleek look and on top of that a 67% keyboard is really useful because you still have your arrow keys and some function keys. Now that we've talked about how I felt building in the KVD67 Lite, let's go ahead and run through a couple of sound tests that are recorded and after that we're going to talk about my final thoughts and if I really think it's worth buying the KVD67 Lite. Now you might be asking me, Hex, do you really think the KVD67 Lite is worth it? And with that, I'd have to say 100% yes. For $130, this keyboard is really, really nice especially for somebody who's looking to just get into the mechanical keyboard community. The silicon and foam padding inside the case make it a really nice sounding keyboard and make it sound a lot more expensive than what it normally is, which is one thing I really like about this. While I did mod my stabilizers, I don't really think it was a need, especially if you're just a beginner, because they do sound decent enough. Including a nice zip up carrying case is a nice touch too, it really makes it feel like a lot more of a premium product. They also include a build guide like I showed earlier in the unboxing which I think is a nice touch because beginners can be a little overwhelmed when trying to build their first custom mechanical keyboard. So if you're in the market for a custom mechanical keyboard and you don't want to spend money on like a GK61 which is a lot more cheaper but it is a lot cheaper sounding then I would highly recommend grabbing one of these if you can get your hands on them because they are out of stock constantly. And that's about going to be it for this video where I talked about the KVD67 Lite and showcased my build in it. If you like this type of content make sure to subscribe and also like and leave a comment below. I appreciate all the love that I got on my last video and I'm excited to deliver more content to all my new subscribers. Thank you so much for watching and see ya.